What's up guys, it's Chase from Chase's Workshop and in this video what I'm going to be doing is, is I'm going to be building a box with drawers in it for all of my crap that you can see here. I've got crap over here, got some over here, over here, all up here, so all these little drawers and stuff. The thing is, is that if you have a bunch of crap, but you don't know where that crap is. You really don't have that crap because you got to find a place to put it. And I'm hoping that by building these guys here, this little drawer assembly, I'll be able to um, keep up with all my crap. So anyways, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it. And I want it to go about right in here. Um, and it's going to be uh, roughly... 250 millimeters. Now the reason I'm using millimeters is is because I've been working on a room for my wife and um, All my tape measures are in that room and this was sitting on the table and I was like hmm I use metric for the day So that's what I did and it's very easy to use if you've never used it I, if, you, if you're used to using inches and stuff like that um, Try it out. It's a, a lot easier at addition and I, I like that. That's, that's a good thing, I guess. But it makes me no less American that I'm using metric now. I'm still um, Imperial 99% of the time. So 250 millimeters. And what I'm wanting to do is th I got these guys right here off of eBay and I'll try to find an Amazon link to them um, because I'm actually an affiliate with Amazon and if you buy something from that link it actually um, gives me a little commission so that um, I make a little money uh, for the videos and stuff that I do. So I really appreciate that. I really do. But anyways, I bought these on eBay for $19 for 10 of them. They are 10 inches long or 250 millimeters. I'm just wanting, I just wanted some short drawers right here. And my plan is to make this guy roughly 500 millimeters wide. I want it about, I want it, it's basically going to fit in this one spot right here. I've got 10 sides that I cut. I cut all this out of half inch plywood that I bought from Lowe's. Um, these are the full width, 250 millimeters. And then they are 45 millimeters uh, tall. So every one of those are, and then the fronts, which are these guys here, they are 425 millim millimeters. And uh, the reason they're 425 is, is because I'm actually going to use the full side is going to be, it's going, they're going to join like that. Now I'm not doing any kind of fancy joinery here. So if you came here to see some kind of really cool joinery, it's not going to happen. I'm going to be using glue and brad nails. It's going to be simple. And then the actual fronts that I made for these guys, and I'm gonna just kind of put this guy together here where you can see it. The front I made, but the reason this one is that long is, is because if I add it all together now, I get it right at two, uh, 450 millimeters for my drawer width. I had to take off for these two sides here. So there's the front and the back, or the front and the two sides. And then I'm gonna have that guy there. Now, the reason I did 45 millimeters, I'm wanting the drawer to actually be 50 millimeters tall, but the thickness of a piece of quarter inch plywood, I think that's what that is. It might be 3 sixteenths. I don't know. I think it's 3 sixteenths. It's roughly five millimeters. So put it on that. And then I have built five fronts that are exactly 50 millimeters tall. So when these guys go on here, it'll cover up my bottom and my sides and I'll have a flush flush there and then I also made them a little bit wider here so that when I put my guide rails or my drawer glides whatever you want to call them on here the front will cover them now I haven't built my box yet and the reason why is because to me it's just easier just to build all the drawers and then figure out you know where you're at on your actual what size box you need now I'm shooting for 500 millimeters and um, if you take the front of this guy here, which is uh, 476, and then you add two pieces of half inch plywood, and these are roughly 12 millimeters each, you get 500 millimeters. So I might be over just a little bit. I might be like 505. If we can keep it between 500 and 505, I think I did a good job. But that's basically how these guys are going to go together. And like I said, the only way I'm, I'm going to put these guys together is I'm just going to take and uh, glue these joints here, shoot some brad nails into them to hold them. Uh, I'm going to glue this bottom on. What? I can't believe I just did that. And then I'll put this guy 
guys on the sides, guys on the sides, guys on the sides, guys on the sides. Can't get them to stay on. And then I'll try to pretty up these fronts to where they can mount on there like that. So, there we go. They can look all right. Oh, two and right quick, I am using just some short brad nails. These are five eighths inch, and I've got some glue and a Bostich, Bostich nail gun. But anyways, take these big guys. I've been putting down baseboard in uh, my wife. I, I basically built my wife a little craft room because she likes to do crafts and stuff like that. And her job, she's a hospice nurse, and her job, they, uh, she's over oversees um, people. Uh, people lose their loved ones and stuff so and she gets to make cards and stuff like that she likes doing that kind of stuff and i feel like she needs a room for it so i'm hoping this kind of go, turns into maybe where she's like hey why don't you build me some drawers for my craft room because i like doing crap like this but uh anyways so here we go There's no telling how much glue is wiped up underneath this <laughs> underneath this table right here. See you. Ta-da! We got a box. So now I'm gonna go ahead and glue on the back or the bottom so that I can square it all up. So we're just gonna put a little bead of glue around this guy. Not a lot, just a little bit. Kind of sturdy it up a little bit. If you're ever wondering what the difference between cheap plywood and real, pl really high grade plywood is, is these little voids right here. I don't know if you can see them or not. This isn't the most expensive plywood in the world, but it uh, it's what I could get easily. So that's what I'm using. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of put it in one corner here. I'm gonna shoot a nail in it, and then I'm going to square it up right here. And then I'm going to square it up over here. Just to make sure that we're square. And I shot one through. Dick gummy. Perfect. Hey, but we've got a pretty much a drawer. And I gotta do five more or four more. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got this glides already on here, but I want to show you exactly how I did this. It wasn't, um, it took a while, but um, it wasn't too bad. I had some stuff I had to kind of uh, tinker with to get it. Now, when I before I cut this board off, this was about a, I don't know, a, probably a six foot board of this thickness all the way through. Before I cut the end of it off here, I met, did some measurements and I put all these on here, then I cut it. And what I did was, is I knew I wanted this bottom right here to be 50 millimeters from the bottom of the thing here. There's two reasons I want to do that. I want this to be an open bottom. The two reasons why I want to do that is, is because if you try to put a piece of flat plywood in here, and over time, being such a long run of plywood, if you try to do it that way, eventually this could bow or something could happen and it's going to drag the bottom drawer, which is pain in the butt. Ask me how I know that. And the other reason is, is because I wanted a little bit of clearance between my bench 
here and when I pour the drawer out. So if I have something sitting up here, I can still pull the drawer out and it's not, not have to clear everything off to pull, pull the drawer out of the bottom drawer out. So I did that. I made sure I had 50 millimeters there. And then I want about a two millimeter gap between each drawer. So I came in here, probably see it, came in here. This is the drawer, the 50 millimeters. And then I put a little two millimeter gap right there. I lined my first guide. Made sure I had it straight. Once I had it straight, I actually found one of these guys here which is out of a set of these that worked perfect for that thickness that I was looking for. So then I had basically a spacer I could use and I just started using this guy. I would put it in here, mount this first screw here, and then I would push it back here and do the second one. And then I just kept doing that over and over and over until I got to my last one. Then I knew I wanted 45 millimeter top up here like so. So I measured up, I measured two millimeters from the top of my top drawer here to this and then I did 45 millimeters up to the top of this and then I cut it. And once I got that done and I had I knew I had those two that's that's the size I wanted. I cut another drawer just like it and then I mounted it next or I set it next to it like so. I lined this bottom drawer glide right here with a piece of wood like that and then I used this same thing. I come in here I put it between those two and aligned it and then aligned it. And then I just kept doing that over and over and over until I had my second side done. So when it's all said and done, hopefully, if all works out well, the front will look somewhat like this with two millimeter gaps between all the drawers and everything. So it'll have a little bit of a gap there and it'll look, it'll look clean, I hope. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm shooting for. Hope it looks good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the drawers in these guys and see how they do. That was the easy part. This is going to be the hard part. <laughs> Trying to get the other side on. Cool. That actually wasn't too bad. Uh-oh. This might be the hard part. <laughs> well, they all open. That's for sure. Okay. So there we go. So like I said, there would be a, you might see it better now. There'd be a 50 millimeter right here at the bottom and there would be a 45 here at the top. And then I will come in here and mount all of the drawer fronts. That ain't the right one, but as you can tell, then I'll come in here and mount all of these drawer fronts like so. There we go. Huh. Worked out better than I thought it would. Cool. Very cool. Alright, I need to make sure I don't cut. Got one, two. It's got to sit like right there. Nice. Now I did buy some. I bought bought these little library type handles, but I don't know how well they're going to do. I don't know if they'll be able to pull. They might. They're just not very, not very sturdy. I don't know. I might get something different. But anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a uh, 50 millimeter to go down here and one for the back. It's the same size. And then I'm going to cut a 45 up here. That's the same size as that one for the front and the back. Okay, so I got the bottom piece cut here. Um, and what I ended up doing was, is the piece that I had was warped. It had a big bow to it. So I took these and I tried to find the straightest one I could. And that's the one I used. And then I used that piece to cut this piece. And this one was, I don't know if it was on my saw or what, but it was just a little bit too long. So I had to trim it down to get it to fit too. So now what I want to do is, is I'm going to glue these guys in here. I want to try to do it with it sitting here so I can I might just take this guy and lay it on his back. It might be easier. There we go. I'm going to put this piece here. And 
and I'm going to use a clamp to square it up. And then once I get it clamped up, I'll probably set it on the table. So I know that it's pretty good. That's looking pretty good. So let's glue her up. A little glue. I definitely want this to be glued well. And rub it there. So I'm hopefully going to send this thing down once I get done and maybe put some stain or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do to it yet. Let's clamp her up. See, I'm going to move this up so I can get the glue out. Just making sure I'm flush on the front here. Looks pretty good. All right, now there's going to be one that goes right here too. Wait, that was my cut piece for the top. Let's don't use that one. Let's see how this one goes. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do on the back here is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom. And the reason why is is just because I do want it flat here all the way around, but on the back nobody's ever gonna see it, so it really doesn't matter. But if any of this is off from this front, it'll at least uh, make up for it in the back, I hope. That's my plan anyways. Sometimes my plans don't work out. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna glue this guy in here, but I'm gonna glue it just a just maybe a couple millimeters. Just a couple millimeters from the bottom. And then of course this thing's gonna get a back on it anyway, so now I've gotta figure out how to get this thing in there. There we go. And I'm gonna let that sit for about 30, 45 minutes, and then I'm gonna do the same thing up here. Okay, I think this part has dried long enough, hopefully. So I'm gonna take it apart, and we're gonna move to the top. It turned out pretty good. I hope you can see it now, what I did. I didn't glue it all the way to the bottom, so hopefully that's gonna sit it down a little bit. Straight, oh, it's a little crazy. Oh, ain't too bad. I think my I think my droop, my table is just a little wonky. <laughs> if you don't know what wonky is. Okay, so now we're going to move to the top. We're basically going to do the exact same thing that we did. Now you can see the back. The bottom drawer opens without anything hitting it. So now we're going to do the top. Basically, do the exact same thing we just did. If I can find the other piece. Crap. This. It's not it. Tell you what, let's go ahead and glue this one on really quick. I'm just kind of eyeballing it right here, making sure that I've got a gap good enough there. I'm a little off. I think it's because of my sled on my table saw. I don't know to square it up. I guess we'll burn that bridge when we get there, I guess. As you can see here, I'm a little off right there. I've got a little, got about a sixteenth of an inch. We're gonna go with it. Okay, let's glue it up. Like I said, there's no telling how much glue is <laughs> right there. Okay, slide this guy back in. Try not to move all the glue when we do it. Get one of my mile long clamps here. If you're wondering why I didn't do all these at the same time, it's because I only have two of these clamps. I think I need to invest in some, some more clamps maybe. I ain't decided how I'm gonna finish this thing yet. I don't know what I'm gonna do. That looks pretty good. Put around here. I can squeeze it in. So we'll cut, I'm gonna cut this board, the top, 75, and then I'm gonna rip it. I'm gonna rip about 12 millimeters off to account for the front. Okay, so I cut it. Here's my piece. And I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want to go flush on the top because I'm losing a lot of space right here. Thinking about mounting this guy kind of down a little bit to where I can have a.
shelf area. I think that might be better than having than not having a shelf area. The only problem is, is I'm gonna have to pull do what I'll do. I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shim this bottom up just a little bit with some scrap pieces of wood. And then I will glue that guy in there. Oh, goes well. And then it should keep me off the front to where I don't have, you're not seeing this end in the front. And then glue her in. I think that'll work good. That way I'll have some type of way to, when this thing's in here, I have a little shelf maybe. I don't know, what do you guys think? I think, I think that'll work good. Actually, I might use a couple pieces to do that. I think that will get me above the line. Let's see what that does. Okay, now you just went in there, piece of wood. Okay, yeah, I think that'll do good. The only thing I'm really worried about is, is making sure that I don't see that right under here. Because I'm trying to keep this distance there. Okay, so that's what I want to do. That's how I want to do it. Thinking I can just put some glue on this board here, stick it in there, and then clamp the back. And I think that will might hold. I might even pull this off and scoot it back a little bit so that I can clamp kind of the, this side and this side, maybe. Probably want to be the dang thing in here with the sides already on it. Probably should have done this before I did this. But you live, you learn. I'm not going for glamour shots here, though, so. Just going to put some glue. Down the side, across the front here, and then down this side, like so, like so. Put my excess under my table here, so my kids can look at it one day and go, what the crap is that? I'm just going to try to pry out a little bit, and then slide it in. Yeah. I hope I can loosen this thing without breaking my joint there. Get some good squeeze out. Oh, caught my cord. Sorry. Still got my cord. Take him. Now let's clamp the back. Let's try it now. All right. These will come out. What? I'm trying to catch the cord again. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. Whew. It's hitting the. <laughs> it's hitting the thing here. That works pretty good. All the drawers are working. All right, we're gonna wait till that dries and then we'll put the drawer faces on. All right, I got a little correction to make. Earlier, when I said this was 70 something inch uh, millimeters, it was actually 470 four millimeters so i had to do a little correction there the way these guys work is it's, it's they go 70 to, to or uh, zero to 100 between each of these so you got to look back it's the only thing that's really been kind of tricky for me to keep doing because always i'm like oh it's only 74 millimeters but it's actually 400 sorry anywho i'm hoping these drawers i'm, I'm trying to figure out how to put these guys on what I might do is just pull out the drawer above it so that I can see what the crap I'm doing. So I want this guy right here to sit flush with the top of the drawer. And then I've got about probably a millimeter or so on each side. Hope you can see that. So it kind of... And the way I'm going to put these on here is I'm just going to use... Um, wood glue. <laughs> what I've used this whole time. So I'm gonna use wood glue and wood clamps. I might order to take off just a hair more on these on these fronts. So I think I'm gonna take these back over there and take off another two millimeters and see how that looks. Okay, so we're at 471 now. I didn't want the size. To, if, if this drawer gets the drawer gets jammed somehow, I don't want the side to catch. I want it to go in. And with the last one, if I push it this way, it would catch the side of the 
box. I didn't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this first one on here. I'm going to mark sides right here so I know where I want it. Let me go find some clamps. Or some of wood clamps. First, put these up so I picked the wrong one again. Thing that I forgot to close and now it's all jammed up. That gum it. How about a rewards card from a gas place? Oh, and they asked me if I want these. I'm like, heck yeah, because I need glue spreaders minus the hair that's stuck in it. What I do with excess of that? Scrape it under the bench. It's there in the way. Glue. This one. Let's do this one. This one's cute. I'll show you a cute one. You want to see a cute one? That's cute. I'm going to use them just because. I know it ain't going to do any good. Now if I can keep that one far enough out of the way to where I can do the next one. And... And I don't have my pencil. Damn it! Oh, there it is. <laughs> Under hidden in this something, as always. Another clamp. Number four. C H A S E. I can't do my last name because it's way too long. That's it right there, isn't it? Yeah. I believe three is done. Hoping I get all these done that they all go back in. <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta take one out. And that's all. Well, right there. Let me see if I can find some more clamps. Oh, heck. Do y'all see why now I want uh, <laughs> some places where I can find all my crib. I think I might have enough to do this one. I don't have to wait to till number five dries before I can. Got this guy here. I like at least three. The thing bad about these is I don't want it to dent the front. Oh, there's one right there. All my clamps are missing their end. Okay, this is gonna be... Alright, there's number two. Go right against the top of the... Boy, the three more clamps would be amazing right now. I do have... Oh. <laughs> ah. These pieces right here. Okay, we're gonna pretend number five dry. Hopefully it is. If it's not and it falls off, I'll glue it back on again. That probably makes some of y'all cringe. I'm sorry. Oh, tied. That looks better. Those are supposed to be exclamation points. They look more like six dots oh well roll tide Naji. Naji. i did teach my daughter how to say Naji last night so <laughs> it was pretty cool i just like football but i am an alabama fan 
Don't hold that against me. Roll tight. Okay. Now that my hands, I can't put no more glue under here because ah, uh, tore my glove on my last one. Let's go right by here. Let's put number five in to see how it looks. Oh, yeah. Five worked. That gummit, I grabbed the, keep grabbing the thing. I'm trying to get it turned where you guys can see it. All right, so let's put them all in. Yeah, looks pretty good. Three. Well, all right, guys, so it's been about probably 15 days since you, what you just saw just a few minutes or a few seconds ago. Um, and a few things have changed, but um, I am here. That's the main thing. Um, I'm going to say, let's see, on the 16th of December, my captain called me and said that he had tested positive for COVID. And so I was like, well, well, well. and we kind of knew um, working at the fire department, we, we run COVID calls, you know, quite often. And I wouldn't say we run a, a ton of them, but we do run them quite often. And um, so it wasn't, it wasn't a shocker to any of us that somebody at the fire department's got it. So anyways, but I had been around him that Wednesday. And so anyways, that week kind of played on and I, you know, did my thing, everything else. Five days later. Um, which would have been a Monday, the 21st, I woke up and I felt like I'd run a marathon the day before. And I was like, oh crap, you know, I feel, I feel achy or whatever. So anyways, <clears throat> um, not long after that, I, I took some medicine and felt, felt better, felt fine. And then um, my captain called me and said, hey, um, how are you feeling? I was like, well, I woke up this morning, felt like I'd run a marathon. And he was like, uh oh. And he said, well, you need to go get tested um, and make sure you don't have COVID before you come back to work. I was like, all right. So anyways, I went that night. The, 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 the soonest time I could get to get a rapid test was like 4.40 that evening. Um, so I went over there, and um, it was pretty cool the way, the way it all worked. You pulled up in the car. You registered on your phone. They come out and give you the test and all that stuff. It took about... I don't know, an hour and a half, but I had to pee the whole time, of course. Always, always had to pee. Especially in a situation like that where I can't go pee, because I'm pretty sure they ain't going to let me come in there and pee, you know, suspected of having COVID. But anyways, so she comes up there, sticks the thing up my nose, both noses, both noses, both nostrils. Anyways, about, I don't know, 30 minutes later, they come back out and they go, Mr. Weatherford, you are positive for flu A and COVID. And I'm like... You gotta be kidding me, right? So anyways, they give me a bunch of medicine, um, come home, tell my wife, tell my family and everybody. That started our 10 day quarantine, which I have come out of tomorrow, Thursday, the 31st. And actually I go back to work tomorrow too, so that's good, I'm ready to get out of the house. That's why I didn't get finished with the box, which actually I did get finished with the box, I just didn't film it. Um, I just come down here and kind of messed with it when I had time. And um, so I'm going to go out here and show it to you in just a minute. But anyways, the only symptoms I had really were, like I said, I woke up that morning and I had body aches. So my wife's a nurse and she was like, that's more than likely that's the flu A that you were experiencing there. As far as the COVID goes, um, I can't taste or smell anything. My daughter sitting in my lap the other day and she had some juice with her and whatever i don't know if she peed on me or if the juice is on me i can't tell because i can't smell anything can't smell nothing nothing can't taste anything can't smell nothing and i'm just i'm thankful that that's the only symptoms i've had because i know a lot of people a lot of people that i know have experienced really bad uh symptoms with it and some of them have passed away and um it's i'm just i'm just thankful that uh, all, I, all I've done so far is lost my taste and my smell, which sucks, but it's not as bad. So with all that being said, that's what's all happened. Um, we were in quarantine all through Christmas, so it was just me and my family, which was, a, I mean, it was a good thing, I guess. We got to be together. Normally, I was supposed to have worked 
at the fire department Christmas Day. And if you don't know, we work 24 hours, so I'd have been at I'd have been at the fire department from seven in the morning Christmas Day till seven in the morning on the 26th. And uh, you know, that's uh, that's happened a lot since I've had kids. Which, you know, it is what it is. We always try to um, see if Santa Claus will come a day early or a day late to where and uh, enjoy it together. But uh, this year, under the circumstances of being in quarantine, we did get to spend Christmas together. And thankfully, it wasn't as bad as uh, some other people have had. And then also, too, you know, if I'm not working at the fire department, that means somebody else has to spend Christmas at the fire department. So that kind of makes you feel, you know, a little down for them. But anyways, so with all that being said, I'm going to take you out here and I'm going to show you. I got the box done. I haven't put any kind of uh, finish on or anything like that. I don't even know if I'm going to or not. I might just paint the dang thing like some crazy color or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But... Uh, the whole inspiration for this project, I don't know if y'all, I don't know if I think I've said it, but it came from Adam Savage. I don't know if you're, if you're ever watching his stuff, but he did like a mechanics tool chest and on one of his things, and I was like, man, I need some of that stuff. So, anyways, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it here and we're going to look at it. Okay, so here it is finished. I'm um, not really finished. i got to put the finish on it, but I ain't, I just hadn't done that yet. Um, but I did, I think the only thing you didn't see me do was put these knobs on, um, and that, pretty easy to do you just you know center it up and put a knob on it uh, these knobs actually came from uh, the fire department um, about 12 years ago we redid our kitchen at station one we had all these knobs from the cabinets there and um, I was like let me have them so these have been at the fire department I guess since the place was built I mean they're really old and I thought it was kind of appropriate to have those on here I thought it was pretty pretty neat to use those and I had tried to I thought about doing one on each side but I just ended up doing one in the middle I thought it was better that way I guess so yeah that's really the only thing I did that uh, you guys didn't see and I've also been kind of putting stuff in here now this drawer right here I ordered some I think it's called Kaiser foam you can get it from Rockler, but um, you, you know, especially the stuff you put in here, and then you can cut it out. Because I want to, I want some of this stuff to be in here, to where I know if something's missing or not when I, when I open it up. Okay, if this is in there, where's this at? You know, I can kind of keep up with stuff better. And this has really helped a lot in the probably couple weeks that I've been using it with my B benders and stuff. Because you'll see here in just a second, I've got this empty drawer. I've got all that stuff in here. Um, these are just parts for my uh, saddles. Um, this is a drawer that I've been working on. These are the things that I use to when I make my kits. When you get a kit, I, I, I number all of them. These are just punches that I use to to number them. And then this drawer right here is probably the one I've pretty much finished the majority of it. You know, I just got my taps. I've got my lathe, uh, whatever the crap they're called. I can't remember. I can't remember what they're called. And you know, I've got all my different parts. This is what I use for when I when I put the actual flange bearing into this. It's a little tight, so I take this guy, mount it on here. I'm trying to do all this one-handed. Put it in the lathe and turn it just a little bit, and then it makes it where that part will fit in there better. I have all this stuff in one spot, um, and of course I've got. Just everything. It's just nice having everything where you can just see it. And I had one of these break off. These are not hard to make. I might do a video where I show you how I do these. They're really easy to do. I just take whatever I'm using, like this white board here was some, that was left over from uh, my wife when she uh, working on her room. She got some stuff to put in um, her craft room and had some wood left over. So I just took it and ripped it down. And then I used... Um, this here super glue gel super glue works works better because this stuff will absorb uh real thin super glue and it don't stick as well but i'm um, just basically just use super glue to stick these in here and i made it like this so you can pull it out where it's not it's not stuck in there so that's why i did those and um you know that's it i've got it pretty good and it's like i said it's worked <clears throat> it's worked really well when doing stuff and that was the whole idea for this whole thing was to make it to where everything was easy to get to and um 
everything has its spot so I know if something's missing and I know where to put something back at because before I had stuff in this thing I had stuff sitting back here I had stuff I mean everywhere and then I also built this little guy here and all this is is um, these little boxes came from a, a kit that my wife had and um, I just built this box and just put these in here so that you know if I want to work on knob tools I can pull the knob tools out and I've got all uh, the different parts that I need to work on them um, I've got string through saddles which I usually use that box there for that there's so many parts to it uh, tuner pads I don't know if I've ever showed any of these before I've, these, I've been putting these with the kit the bee bender kits well, if I can grab the right one and basically all that does is it sits on the end of the tuner and so when the uh, arm comes up it hits that instead of the metal tuner part and it dampens it so I've been telling that but those have been coming with the kits now too Um, and then I also made a new spring mount. I don't have one that I can show you, but basically it's this guy here, and there's a hole drilled in it to where the tremolo spring can go go into that, and just works better. And of course, I just got a bunch of other boxes full of crap, pretty much. So yeah, the organization's working out really well. And um, you know, if, if you've got a shop where you're doing stuff like this, something like this can go a long way in keeping up with your parts and um, making it more fun to work, <laughs> I guess I should say. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I've done, like I said. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pre pretty much done with that one, except for putting the finish on it. I don't know what kind of finish I'm gonna do on it. Um, I thought about maybe staining it and then maybe putting some uh, true oil on it. But um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I need to do something quick though, because I, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've got finger smudges all over it. And uh, hopefully uh, <laughs> the stain will cover that up, I guess. But I don't care really. I want it to, I want it to look like it's old or that it's, you know, I don't want it to look like I built it in 2020. I want it to look like I built it in, I don't know. I'm just being stupid. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, if you have any questions about any of this stuff that I've that I've done in this video, um, leave them in the comments, send me an email, however you want to to get in touch with me. If you enjoyed the video, give me a like. And if you liked it, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.